Hello, what's up? How are you doing? How are you doing today? Hope you're great. Welcome to another, another, another Flutter Flow tutorial. Um, this is a request from someone on my channel saying, Hey, I want to know how to create add comments in Flutter Flow. So this person is creating some sort of a mobile application or some sort of a blog. Yeah, that's it. A blog. And he, he just wants to know how do you create a how do you create a post and then get users to leave comments beneath that particular post? So that's basically what I'm going to be covering. How do you add comment section in Flutterflow? So this is going to work if you're designing some sort of a review application, marketplaces, anything that requires users to leave a review, of course, it's going to work. So no, no, no need a bit now in the bush. Let's get started with learning how to use comments on Flutterflow. And don't forget to click that subscribe button before you you know when you're done watching the video or now that you're trying to watch the video click on the on the subscribe button so you get notified whenever i launch a new video and also i'm available if you really want to you need consistency in your you know your flutter flow application or you need someone to get your flutter flow application done and launch in the play store feel free to reach out to me thank you to create an, an application that that allows users to add a comment first you need to set up the database Without setting up the database properly, you will not be able to allow users to drop comments and you will not be able to display those posts and the comments beneath it. It's just like when you're creating a tool like Instagram. If you're creating it, if you, if you see, look at the Instagram interface, you would see that users are able to view posts and at the same time are able to um, leave comments and view comments at the same time. So first thing first, you have to go ahead and set up your database. And there are two ways you can do this. So I'm going to show you both ways as fast as possible. First thing first is to create a data type and just call it post. So create a data type and call it post. And under this post, we can um, choose a template, you know, social post. Let's just choose a template. Say so post, we have a photo, post title, post description, user, time, you know, stuff like that. That's what it's going to have. And then next thing that you go and do, you create a comment, a collection called a comment. Don't forget your naming convention. So if you're doing all lowercase, let everything be lowercase. If you're doing comma case, like, uh, like this, comments from, so you want to do so. If you're doing the underscore so you want to do it so you have to make you you have to do that very well so that's by the wayside then you create a comment like so and then a comment you know a comment will have a name uh, will have a test of course uh, a test or you know just like that we have a test and it will have a timestamp a comment will have a timestamp and that's going to be yeah a timestamp and then you really have to know who created a comment and who create you, you you really want to know who created a comment and you really want to know what post that comment is associated with, associated with and so this is the way you do it you would create let's say we we'll come here and then we'll create a post and on that post we're going to say document reference and the document reference is just going to be a post that's what it is so by doing this, you are able to say, hey, I am, uh, um, whenever you create a comment, I want you to know, the, I want you to, I want to know the post that this comment belong to. And remember the first thing you do, create a test, the timestamp, the post, and um, you can go ahead and create, add more feeds if you want to. The next relationship that you want to do, you want to add the user. So who's who's creating it? Who's creating this particular comment? So then you want to associate it, associate it with a user, and that's going to be a user. That's going to be document reference, and it's going to be a user. So that's that's what you want to do. That's these are the only things you need to actually create the comment to set up your database so you can accept comment. So another thing that you want to do is. Um, Another way to do this, to, to accomplish this same thing, is to say, you go to post, yeah, click on the plus sign, and then you create comment. And then say, comment is a sub-collection of what? Post. Yes. So that's all you have to do. Comment is a sub-collection of post. What this means is that whenever a person creates a comment, Flutter flow automatically associated with a particular post. So without you having to create any sort of relationship or whatsoever. And then you can then go ahead and say a 
a post will have a test whatever you want to call it is fine and also a post will have a user a comment will have a comment owner which is a user a comment owner which is a reference and it's a user so that's how you will set up your database to accept comments so let's go ahead and then display those comments on our flutter flow application so to do so we'll go back to our application we'll go back to our application and then we will click on the home screen this is the home screen that we're going to be displaying the comments on and then we'll click on the plus sign click on the plus here so we can use a template so because we want to um well, this is not a ui design class right now and we want to just focus on the template on the on the core feature which is your ability to see comments and, and see posts so we're just gonna we're just gonna skip the the part of designing the screen so there's a particular template that you can use and that's a comment template yeah this is what this is the this is the template I'm looking for. So you can see on this template we have the post, we have the test, we have all this. If we go back to our database, I'm sure we can add a little bit more. So we have the post, post title, description, um, time, and the rest. The only thing that we don't have here is the post owner. So um, we're gonna add the post owner, and that's gonna be a relationship with the user. So once you're okay with that, you then go ahead and display all these on the screen. So this is going to be, this is a list. Yeah, this is a list like this, a list view. And then we'll go ahead and look for add a query. And then we'll say, what's this query about? Is a collection and is a post. What kind of post is guys going to be all the posts there? So let's say all the posts, but if we were doing some sort of a, we're, we're adding, you know, being very careful and adding security. This is going to be a post of maybe just uh, everybody without a user. So a user cannot see the post. It just depends on how you want to structure it. If it's a paid plan, so you want to say a user will not be able to see any post that it's that they, they, they any post that their subscription plan does not allow, they, they won't be able to see it. So we'll say confirm, create. So that's all done. And then we can go ahead and structure all this. So I, I really want you to see this is going to be this is going to be structured this way. So normally you'll be looking for post photo, but this is not the, this is not what you're looking for. What exactly you're looking for right here? You're looking for, looking at the role. Yeah, you're looking at this role and you want to query a single element. So you want to say document from reference you want to query the user or you want to say post document um post post user or post owner yeah let's just go with the post owner and single time query and that's fine so the reason why you're doing that is so that you'll be able to pull in the details of that post owner so for for some of the details they want to pull in want to pull in the images pull pull in the images the photo url I'm sure you know how to do this already. So you want to pull in the user document. You want to pull in the user name and you want to pull in the time that this person actually created the post. So that's what you want to pull in time posted and the time posted time format. You want to make the time format relative just so that it shows like one second ago, a minute ago. And this is going to be the post itself. I guess you're seeing what we're doing. So that's going to be the post description. Then you can go ahead and add the like, the cans. But what we're interested in is to show you the this other list view. This is the view that you're interested in. This particular list view. And this view is going to be comments. So this view is going to be a comment. So you're going to query, um, query, query collection. And this is going to be comment so we have two different comments here so let's go back to our database and see which of them we're querying first uh, on our database we have this particular comment the one without the x with, without the x and we have comment with the x the one without the x is a sub collection and this other one is just a single collection so let's go back to our application click on this we're going to say add docker query add reference we're going to say query collection and it's going to be so let's query the one first with the X. Query all sub collection and say confirm. 
so you can see that it's just going to query you don't need to add some sort of a feature you don't need to add some sort of a feature or anything you can see you're not seeing those feature over here comment owner test there's no feature for you to add it's just going to show all the sub collection that this particular post is true that's where it's going to show all the sub collection where this particular post is true that's where it's going to show and we can also do it another way so we can go back again so this is if you're using the sub collection method if you're using the sub collection method do it this way so we're doing this other way so let's go ahead and say query data collection it's going to be all comments list comments so we're going to use the feature where the post is equal to where the post is equal to this document reference and then we say create user then you can now order so it's very, super cool for you to always you know try to order your stuff you know with time with anything sometimes you might get an error when you refuse to order things around so you can say you can say uh yes create and you can see that both of them works the same way both works the same way and you can see we do not have any error and don't forget to always go back to your database go back to your database to deplore so you go back to your database and make sure that these are deployed when you go when you come back here just make sure they are deployed so that you don't have any you know runtime error especially when you create a when you're trying to search for something you always have to come back here deplore validate and before you actually run your application so um do go ahead and try that i'm 100 percent sure that this is going to work for you the reason why i'm not running this right now is because i have not been able to make payment for the for the prepaid plan where i can add data directly from flutterflow and adding data outside of flutterflow it's pretty tedious and i haven't created a part of the application where users get to create posts hopefully i'll be able to design a full-fledged you know flutterflow beginner's guide we have will create something like mm, probably a blog that have all these you know features till then um just go ahead and practice this let me know what you think in the comment section and i'll do what to answer any question that you might have and don't forget you know just keep in touch um i my Keep in touch. I, I have a Flutterflow Beginner's Guide uh, tutorial coming along. I'm going to be launching it soon. And hopefully it's going to be free. If it's not free, then you get to pay anything for it. So you can, you know, learn Flutterflow, build your own application and go ahead and help your business grow or launch the idea that you have. Don't forget, if you have questions, leave it for me in the comment section. I'll do well to answer you. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching. To have yourself a beautiful, beautiful Flutterflow week ahead. Thank you.